When people see a 3D virtual space being used with school students, they often ask, why are these kids playing games instead of learning? People have a tendency to associate this sort of virtual environment with computer games. But a 3D virtual environment is not a game. It's a space. It's a space with its own special rules and potentials. Just like a classroom is a space, or the school oval, or the science lab is a space. Sure, you can play games in the space. The space itself is neither good nor bad for education. It depends entirely what you're doing in the space. At Northern Beaches Christian School in Sydney, Australia, we've established a 3D virtual space that we're very deliberately using for learning. We use the space for learning in two very distinct ways. The first way is using the space for undirected, unplanned student learning, where students use their initiative and creativity to build, explore and create in teams of students. The second way is when teachers use the space for directed, supervised, structured learning, where students take part in an activity designed to target and to develop a specific skill. All of these buildings were created by students independently, collaboratively, using skills that they acquired by themselves with no teacher assistance. They used initiative, research and showed perseverance and working together have created these buildings. Let's have a look at them. Here is a student created clothing shop selling virtual clothes that other students can wear for virtual money. In fact, this particular student now takes other students' clothing designs and sells them on in this clothing store on a commission basis. Here, students have created and managed their own bookstore, selling literature, uh, poems and stories, etc., and essays, uh, composed by other students around the school. A team of students created this auditorium for whole class activities, celebrations and other public discussions. This student designed an art gallery showing monthly exhibitions celebrating the real life art produced around our school. Some students are currently working on a maths labyrinth where to open each door and progress through the maze you have to solve a maths problem. A team of students put together this welcome centre designed for new arrivals to show them around and give them some tips and tricks. In all of these instances Students have put together a plan and submitted a building proposal for approval by our school virtual land council. They have then gone ahead and by working together have researched how to create these structures and even how to program, how to script these objects to behave in a certain way using a special programming language that is part of the environment. Not a day goes by where I am not absolutely gobsmacked by some new technique the students have discovered for creating or changing or hacking this environment to make it do new, amazing, wonderful things. An employer would jump at the chance of hiring these students who have shown creativity, drive, project management skills, independent inquiry, and the ability to collaborate as part of a team making decisions at the age of only many of them 13, 14, 15 years old. There are already examples of employers hiring on this sort of basis. This 3D virtual world is encouraging high order skills. Our virtual island even has its own radio station with songs and articles
composed by students from around the school. These French students are listening to our radio station while dancing and chatting in French. Let's have a listen to the radio station from one of the school's senior bands. It's a marvelous night for a moon dance with the stars up above in your eyes. To our year seven band. To our year two students talking about what they're learning in class. Beatles. Hi, what's your name? Carla. Some underwater beetles eat tadpoles, but ground beetles eat veg vegetables. Classes around the school feed into this radio station, which is listened to by people who are in the virtual environment. Our 3D space is also used for directed learning targeting specific skills. Here, maths students are surveying and calculating the positions and heights of the trees on our island. They do this using X, Y, Z coordinates. Once they've gathered the information, they apply a statistical analysis of the data and submit reports and graphs with their findings. Here is a discussion area where students either choose a square or line themselves up to indicate their opinion or their strength of opinion on a given topic. For any subject, this helps students define their opinion. Here you see language students at the auditorium. They're typing their answers to the quiz questions that the teacher has given them. This is a great technique that works with any class and particularly works with boys. All of their text answers show up on the screen for everybody to see and for the teacher to give feedback. The maths maze is going to be fully customizable so that each lesson there will be different maths problems to solve in order to go through the next door and get through the labyrinth. The labyrinth will change from lesson to lesson, from week to week. Here is an amazing discussion device. It creates seats for all of the students in your class. The students sit down and then find themselves in pairs, in little pods way up in the atmosphere of the virtual world. In their group of two, they can discuss a given topic, but there's a timer counting down. When it gets to zero, they find themselves instantly transported to another pod with another student. It's like speed dating. Every few minutes it cycles through and then the students find themselves down on the ground again. Their discussion is emailed to the teacher for marking and feedback. There is nothing lightweight about this activity. Advanced English students can take part in difficult debates using quotes and primary sources to back up their opinions, with the transcript of what they type being formally assessed. This looks ridiculous, but it turns out that while students are dancing on a dance floor, they feel a lot less psychological pressure in their French class and feel a lot more relaxed, a lot more confident with text chatting in French, practicing their language skills. And of course, we've already looked at the radio station, the bookstore, and the art gallery. These allow almost any student work across the whole school to be published and celebrated, whether it's audio or visual or text. Our 3D virtual environment is not a game. It is a space, and it is a space that we are using to encourage high order skills among students letting them define their projects and take initiative to follow them through to completion, but also using the space to target specific skills in specific classes. We found that students fall in love with this environment, that it engages them immediately. Their excitement and enthusiasm is channeled into their learning. It's not the ultimate tool for teaching or for learning, it is just a tool amongst many tools available for learning at a school but it's a tool that definitely deserves to be there.